to the tin barn. We're going to spend a little time in here this morning uh, on a project that uh, I hope many of you will find enjoyable, if not beneficial. Uh, I'm pragmatically, of course, and today's project is going to deal with our oil cans, oil pots, oil buckets, whatever you want to call them. Uh, most of you know what happens when you've got a little cutting oil in the bottom of this and you knock it off your, your mill or your lathe. Uh, you got all this spot on the floor then. So I think several of us have probably used a chicken or the tuna can and put us a little castellated piece. These are pieces from two different ones so that doesn't fit there but uh, uh, I actually made one of these uh, that this fit out of a, a chicken can like uh, Mr. Pete did. Uh, and after I guess about three or four months I noticed everywhere I'd set the can down it was, when, later when I pick it up it'd be oily underneath the bottom. I got to looking and it had actually eat a hole in the bottom of the can. So the chicken can didn't last me too long. This is a tuna can and uh, it it, it works okay. The uh, copper piece that I had in it was actually a copper fitting threaded on the inside. And what it would do, uh, or what it did, was push my bristles out. Uh, made the uh, uh, bristles on the uh, brush, this one's been trimmed back a little bit, uh, kind of made it look like a uh, freshman, freshman girl's legs on prom night. Uh, they were kind of spread wide open. But in any case, I spent some time, uh, it's been a few weeks ago, and completely over-engineered uh, the humble little oil pot. This is made out of a block of three inch aluminum. Aluminum uh, Works real good. This tube goes down in there, and you know how these work if you turn them over uh, drop them off. The only oil that's going to spill is the part uh, is a little bit oil that's in the hole here. This is all hollow on the inside and I usually keep it about a quarter to three eighths inch deep in oil. And I also put a, uh, I've got a roll of the toolbox liner. I put, glue some of that on the bottom and that gives it a good, uh, uh, especially on metal, uh, on the lathe or the mill, it's that much harder to knock off uh, or to slide or even possibly vibrate off your equipment. Again, the only problem I have with this three inch one, and this is a three quarter hole in here, again, the, the bristles of the brush, it was a little bit harder to, to get in there and it won't long before they'd be sprayed out. And again, uh, look, look like our friend from high school. So, Second time around, I built the four inch one. Did the same thing, the only difference was I started out with a one inch hole in the top, and then I actually flared that hole. I cut it at an angle so I've got an inch and a quarter opening for the brush, uh, down through, and again, this is all hollow, and everything you're seeing here is one piece of material. This that goes down in there, all this is one piece. The second piece is actually the bottom, which is going to be pressed in. Now, I'm going to make another one of these today. Uh, I want another one or two for myself here in the shop. Uh, uh, one on the mill, one on the lathe. Uh, I love to put WD-40, liquid WD-40 in one of them and have close by. Uh, I've got a, this, my little mini equipment, still got that, the mini mill, mini lathe, and I, I use uh, every once in a while, especially the little mini mill, uh, use it more for drill press than anything else. But uh, the one I'm going to build today is uh, hopefully, if it turns out good like I expect it to, I'm going to be sending it to Keith Fenner for his What's in Your Box uh, 2016 campaign. I don't think he's officially kicked it off yet for this year, but uh, I know many of the guys are headed out to uh, to California next week for the uh, summer bash and uh, uh, 
so I suspect he'll be kicking it off uh, after he returns from that, maybe the 1st of July sometime. But I'm going to go ahead and build it. Uh, it's not that I'm trying to get ahead of anybody else. Uh, it's just that I hadn't done a, a video in several weeks now. And this was the next project I had in line that I thought worthy of videoing. So that's what I'm going to work on today. I've got a billet of material. This again is four inch by two and a half inches high. Uh, we'll leave a uh, one inch above for this spout. It'll be about a quarter inch body in the middle here and then about a one inch in the bottom. That other quarter inch is where we'll mill out the press in our bottom for that. Uh, I have some witness marks uh, laid out with a compass on this one uh, just for my reference so I don't bozo this piece. This is the last piece of uh, four inch that I've got here. Uh, and each one of those witness marks will make a little more sense to you when I actually get it on the machine uh, to do the, the work that I laid out for. I've got a piece of, uh, this is about 5 sixteenths thick, uh, that would make a perfect body for this, but I want to try something different today. This was, uh, this was actually, uh, I actually cut this one for the bottom of that, but, uh, Buying these small billets of, uh, of uh, aluminum gets pretty expensive. Just a little piece like that's about six dollars. Uh, I realize that the shops that uh, that I'm buying this from have got to take time to make the saw cut, uh, plus the price of the actual material. Uh, I've got a four-inch bandsaw, but it just uh, the blade that I've got on there just clogs up so bad when I'm trying to cut something this thick in aluminum. It's really not worth my effort. So what I'm going to do, and I've not done this before, so you may get to see a bozo today, but I'm actually going to make a round bottom out of this 1 8 inch uh, flat bar. What I'm going to do is cut it off at 4 inches on the bandsaw, uh, trim off some of it, and then I'm going to do something I've seen some other guys on YouTube do, but I've never done it. Uh, we're going to put it in the lathe and make a circle out of it. I've got this little outside uh, caliper set up uh, for my diameter. It's not extremely critical what that piece is. It just needs to be closed. And then when we start milling our bottom to this, we'll, we'll match the piece we set out of this, cut out of this, we'll match it to the bottom of that and press it in. Uh, I'm also, once we get this made, if that works, uh, either piece will wind up using. I'll put it in the freezing unit to my little refrigerator out here in the shop uh, uh, and let it shrink up. I don't have any dry ice like Mr. Pete was showing using a, a few videos back, but uh, I put it in the freezer and get it down to about 25 degrees and that hopefully will draw it up enough that we can press it into the bottom uh, with a little Loctite around the, uh, around the diameter of it. So I'm going to cut this out on the saw, band saw, and I'll uh, meet you over on the uh, on the lathe when we get it done. All right, I went over to the uh, well while I was on the workbench. I laid out a center on here on four inches. <coughs> Excuse me, and just use my compass and drew a circle on there. Then I carried this to the band saw and roughed it out. And now what we're going to do is mount this on the, uh, on the lathe and round it up, make it round, get that out fairly close to the outside. Now what I didn't, didn't think about during the introduction, uh, in the event some of you watching this don't know who Keith Fenner is and his What's, What's in Your Box campaign, uh, Keith was one of the, uh, pioneers on YouTube as far as uh, uh, recording and making available to the public the videos that he makes in his uh, workshop. Uh, Turnright shop up in New England. I believe he's up in New England, but uh, uh, he does some a lot of marine work and very, very educational if you've not looked him up. Just look up Keith Fenner on YouTube and 
and go back and watch his video series. Uh, but he has a campaign, uh, I believe this is either the third or fourth year in it, where his viewers, uh, himself and his viewers, put together toolboxes. And they give them out to, uh, or he gives them out to uh, prospective uh, or young men, young women in the trade, in the machinery trade, that are looking to get a start, uh, journeyman, if you will, not journeyman, apprentice, if you will, uh, uh, that need a little help or a little assistance in getting their toolbox set up. And it's anything. Uh, he'll, he'll gladly accept anything that will work in the toolbox uh, uh, that could use in a machine shop, anything from calipers to taps to end mills to tap, uh, drills, whatever. Uh, and he made a comment the other day on Facebook that he liked the, uh, uh, he liked the shop made tools uh, very much as well. So that's what this is going to be today. And again, if you're not familiar with Keith, please check out his channel. Uh, all right, first thing I'm going to do is uh, use a little bit of acetone, clean the ends off of the chuck uh, jaw real good, and also clean, clean the back of this piece. We're going to use double-sided duct tape to hold that on there so that we can turn the outside diameter. I've got some pieces cut already. You know, duct tape is supposed to work for anything, so we'll see how this does. Again, I'm very new to this. Uh, I promise you, if I crash it, if it uh, ruins the, the piece, I'll leave the video on there. All right, I need something to... need something to start this peeling right here. Get that acetone out of the way. All it takes is just getting the tip in. <laughs> All right. Let's get the uh, live center in the tail stock. And should be able to lock the tail stock down right there. I punched a little center. Uh, in there when I was drawing this out, so I'm going to use that to line up here. All right. Now I suspect the most of the holding is going to come from the live center uh, pressing against this, but we're going to use the tape to hopefully keep it from spinning any. Let's see if you got a good shot of that. I think so. Now I'm going to be taking very small cuts. Uh, I just don't know how much pressure that tape will take. All right, that's my long point. And I've got a stop carriage stop set up uh, just so I don't have to. Uh, stand right here in front of this uh, while it's spinning. We get this scalpel out of the way. And 
Don't want the rag to get caught up in the chuck. So here we go. I do believe we're round now, so now it's a matter of getting down to size. And we've got a right good little ways to go. I believe that's it, folks. Alright, we'll clean up the edges. Get our head slipped a little bit on there, but again, the pressure was on the tailstock, holding that in on the live center. Uh, it didn't make a full revolution, turned, I don't know, maybe 15 degrees there. But I'll clean all this off the lathe and uh, uh, get set back up for the next operation. One more thing I want to say about this piece. Uh, before I get started on the uh, next part on the body itself. Uh, as I said, we put a, uh, a little uh, center punch in there to, uh, uh, to guide us with our life center when we're uh, turning the outside of it. 
that will actually be pressed in so it's out the bottom and we can face that off so that that will not be uh, up inside where you can see it every time you put oil in uh, just a little neck picky but what I'm going to do is put this in the refrigerator now in the, in the freezing unit uh, and it's not hot by any means but it is at least room temperature and I found out on an earlier one uh, what happens when you put something room temperature in the freezing unit uh, my refrigerator is just one of those little apartment refrigerators uh, uh, definitely not a frost free uh, so it's got a little ice build up in the uh, freezing unit and when you lay this in there guess what happens it melts a little bit of that ice and it sinks down in there and then after a period of time everything gets back down to the sub freezing temperature and this has a solid block of ice froze around it so to get it out you got to defrost your refrigerator so what I learned after the first one was simply wrap a uh, wrap this in a paper towel uh, dry it, clean it off good uh, wrap it in a paper towel uh, and then lay it in the freezing unit and that should keep it from uh, sinking down in there I'll do this uh, at the next break uh, now we have the piece uh, the body stock mounted in there and as as I said uh, I've got top and bottom marked uh, just for my benefit I've got the camera backed up just a little bit now so that uh, uh, I'm going to have to be working the tailstock right much and I don't want to be bumping the camera. But first thing we're going to do is uh, center drill it and then we're going to step drill this up to one inch. Uh, we want one inch all the way through it. Uh, that'll be our first operation on this block. I've got the outside jaws in, got it tightened in, got my carriage up here as far out of the way as I can get it. Uh, so let's get a little WD-40 on there. First drill, we're going to start with a 3 8 And of course, this aluminum is very stringy. Uh, it is 6061 material, if that matters. I don't know that much about uh, different materials. But we'll try not to let the, string, the, the strings fly out and, and cut myself with it.
get some of these chips cleaned up and it, if I had had a 7 8 bit, that was a bit much of a step between the uh, uh, 5 8 and the 1 inch. Uh, but it, it did alright, it just uh, squealed a lot. So I'm going to get set up uh, to for the next operation, which will be putting our, our angle in here. As I said, I had some witness marks, and that first witness mark, the 1 inch, took it to that, uh, the one inch drill took, took it to that mark. So I'll get set up and be right back. All right, before I set the angle up to um, to cut this bevel in here to my second witness mark that I've got on there, which is that uh, inch and a quarter diameter. But before I start cutting that, I'm gonna run the, uh, uh, the boring bar through there just to clear up a little bit of that chatter from that large drill bit. This end is going to be, uh, as I said, will be uh, cut more, but uh, I can feel little ridges on the, uh, down in the bottom in here. So I'm going to run that on in the there, uh, just making a very fine cut. Boring bar didn't quite reach through. Left just a little bit of a a burr on that bottom. And I think we can speed it up a little bit. About two and a half more thousands. All right, that went all the way through. Get a tool out of the way. Now we're going to quickly set this up. What I found before, uh, working on the other ones, I believe was 12 degrees. I should have made a note of it, but I didn't. But we're going to try that. If it's not enough, you can always add more. But you can't take it away after it's been... You can't put it back after it's been taken away. I'm going to lock the carriage down right here. Of course, all of this will be done with the compound once I get started. this next cut is going to bring it to our witness mark which was at an inch and a quarter
happy with that. Unlock the compound and get the uh, carriage out of the way. That's nice and slick. I like that. I may run some sandpaper in there before I uh, before I take it out, just to uh, smooth out that transition a little bit. Now the next part we're going to do. Uh, I have another witness mark that's one eighth of an inch out from that, and that's what the finished cut will be. Uh, for the top side, but right now I'm just going to take it down to uh, to some distance out there. Uh, I need to hog out this right here. Uh, it's a good amount. It's going to be stringy, but I'll get set up for that and make a couple passes. After we get that this taken out, we're going to go over to the mill and put this in the rotary table with this part down. So I just want to get this right here down to where I want to leave as much stock as I can uh, just to, uh, to give it mass while I'm doing all this machining on it. But I want to get it down small enough that it will fit in the 5 inch chuck that I have on my rotary table. So I'm going to get this back here, get my uh, compound set back. I usually leave mine set on about 35 degrees. It's just a, a good angle for me to uh, to get to the get to all the handles and not have anything in the way. And I'm going to use high speed steel on this. Uh, it seems to work better when I'm taking these big cuts off. Get it reasonably perpendicular to it. Alright. I want to cut one inch deep down in the layer. That's how high our. Let me get my other one here. I want to cut one inch deep. But for right now, I'm only going to cut about 900 thousandths. Again, I just want to get it down where it'll fit in the chuck on the, uh, uh, on the rotary table. And then we'll make our uh, final cuts on it as one of the, the finished steps. So I'm going to roll my, uh, first off I'm going to turn my, DRO on, zero it out right here, excuse the arm, and I'm going to come in 900 thousandths, and lock my carriage stock down. Eight hundred ninety-eight thousand. So I believe I can live with that. All right. So I'm not going to video all this hogging down. I'll start out now with. I know for a fact it's going to be stringy.
Okay, we're getting close down now to my witness mark. This witness mark is at two inches, and that should fit in my uh, in the five inch chuck on the uh, rotary table without a problem. So I'm going to take one more nice big stringy cut. Uh, I'm taking hundred thousand. 100 thousandths off the diameter at the time, 50 off of each side. So this this cut should do it, and then we'll go over, I'll get set up on the, uh, on the milling machine. Alright, that's going to be a bit warm to touch right now, so I'm going to let that cool for a minute, and I'll bring it back when I got it set up on the milling machine. Mm -hmm. 